Sub hour is impossible, guys. So I mean, there's no way anyone could get sub hour. <laughs> it's li it's literally impossible, guys. It's not possible. Let me just say it. It's not. Humans cannot get sub hour. We're just not gonna do it. In theory, yes, it's possible, but I don't think so. I don't know. I don't see it happening. Sub hour is not gonna happen. Like literally, it will never happen. I legitimately don't think it will ever happen. Personally, that's my own opinion. Someone record him saying that just in case it does happen. <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey was released on October 27, 2017. Upon release, it immediately received incredible commercial success and universal critical acclaim. Super Mario Odyssey took the best from all of the previous Super Mario titles, with Mario able to perform nearly all of the classic techniques from the previous games and the addition of new things such as rolling and Mario's new companion Cappy. It was clear this was the most agile iteration of Mario yet. Now, not only was Mario improved, the levels, known as Kingdoms, were also phenomenally well designed and filled to the brim with things to do and collect. The nearly 900 moons hidden across 17 sandbox style levels opened up endless creative ways to play the game. This combination of expansive levels and satisfying movement inspired many to take Super Mario Odyssey to its absolute limits. Super Mario Odyssey was picked up instantly by the speedrunning community. It was easy to understand and learn but it was clear it had enormous depth and untapped potential. The game was perfectly suited for speedrunning. Beginners and veterans alike wanted to see how far the game could go. Huge speedrunning personalities like Trihex, Spike Vegeta, Grand Pooh Bear, and many more, with a combined fan base of millions, helped to inspire a massive number of people to join the Super Mario Odyssey community as it quickly became one of the largest speedrunning games of all time. Since the game's release, these thousands of runners came together with a unified purpose. Beat the game as fast as possible. Beat Super Mario Odyssey in under one hour. Here we go, off the rails. Don't you know it's time to raise our sails? The first recorded speedrun of Super Mario Odyssey was on October 26th, 2017. The day before the game officially released. Retro Runs managed to get a copy of the game early and did the first ever speedrun of Super Mario Odyssey, with a final time of 3 hours, 28 minutes, 17 seconds. This was just a first playthrough with the intent of going fast, so it wasn't anything special. And when the game came out to the rest of the world during that first week, Retro Runs' Day Zero record was beaten. A lot. The first person to beat Retro Runs was Monkey King Hero, who took the record down by two hours over the next few days until I Am Tendo took over and cut off another 10 minutes. On October 2nd, nearing the first week, the world record was already down to a 118.53. A lot was learned about the game during the first week. To beat the game, you had to pass through 14 kingdoms. In order to leave each of these kingdoms, you were required to collect a specific amount of moons. Each kingdom had story-related progression and boss fights, but in the case of most kingdoms, these are completely optional. Let's take a look at this week one run to see what it looked like. I Am Tendo's record was understandably pretty rudimentary. Some skips had already been discovered though. Dino Skip in Cascade Kingdom allowed I Am Tendo to skip nearly the entirety of the kingdom by just jumping from a trampoline with the dino straight into the boss fight. Skipping the Klepto cutscene in Lost Kingdom was also possible by jumping onto the mountain using the trees on the side. A skip in Night Metro allowed I Am Tendo to jump across the buildings instead of going all the way around. The single largest skip in the run was also discovered within the first week. Moon Cave Skip. If Mario ground pound jumps on the Sphinx's head, wall jumps from a precise spot, then again on another spot, it's possible to land beside the Moon Cave exit, which is supposed to be a tough end game gauntlet. In addition to these skips, there were some basic fast strats already developed for some boss fights, the most notable being the Mecha Brutal fight, where I Am Tendo was able to stay on top of the mech using the bird and destroy the Brutals without having to climb back up. You could tell he wasn't fully comfortable with the game yet, but it was a respectable record for the first week. Other runners were trying for the record too though, and they caught up fast. The one to take the record from I Am Tendo was Valu111, a legendary speedrunning veteran holding multiple prestigious Mario records over the years. He beat I Am Tendo's record by 2 seconds that same day, at the time of 1.18.51. Valu wasn't done there, he dominated the category for nearly a week crushing his own times and improving the record at an insane rate. By November 8th, he had nearly single-handedly brought the record down over 8 minutes to a 110.43. What was done during this week to reduce the world record so drastically? Well, firstly, during that week, more skips were discovered. Jaxi Skip made it possible to get a moon on top of Jaxi Runes early. A faster Klepto Skip, named Meme Tree, was done by jumping from a tree instead of the cage. A faster Night Metro skip was found, using an awning to jump straight up the buildings. 
and a big jump in Luncheon Kingdom was used to grab some fast moons right at the start. With all of these new skips being discovered, the community was able to develop more optimized routes to nearly every kingdom in the run, saving minutes. Another big find was Birdless Mech. Using some precise jumps, it was found that it's possible to get on top of the Mecha Brutal without using the Pokeo to climb it. Valu took these new skips, routes, and tricks and played better than everyone else. Each run, his movement with Mario becoming more refined than the last. Valu wasn't the only speedrunning juggernaut grinding away at runs during this week. Iwabi74 managed to catch up briefly, getting a record of 1.10.22 on November 10th. But later that day, Valu fired back with a world record by over a minute. Man, that run, it was so good. The next person to take the record was Samurai Man, another top-level speedrunner well known for his world records in Super Mario Sunshine. Yes! <laughs> yes! It just happened, dude. Oh my god. A few days later, Iwabi managed another record, which Valu beat that same day. And Iwabi took it right back the next day. With all of these incredibly experienced speedrunning veterans improving the world record day after day, one was bound to come out on top. And who was it? Well, it was Shaden, actually. It was a late split. I always split late. I'm gonna do another run. And then I'm going to bed. Now, Shaden, I haven't mentioned yet. I haven't mentioned him because he seemingly came out of nowhere. It turns out, Shaden used to go by Pydoix in the past, and Pydoix is known as one of the best, if not very best, Ocarina of Time speedrunner ever, who just disappeared around 2013. Something about Super Mario Odyssey must have reignited his passion for speedrunning, because he came back full force. Shaden was special. He had a different mindset to the other runners at the time. He didn't care about records or being better than anyone else. Okay. I actually would do one more run, but I need to eat something. In fact, he didn't even submit his runs to the leaderboards. All he cared about was improving himself. And did he ever improve fast? Alright, I'm gonna do another run. That was it didn't go very well. But it was pretty good. Still want that 105. Alright, I got the 105 I wanted. Shaden was the first runner to really start going for the optimal strats, no matter the difficulty. Some of these strats included Flower Road Skip, Sphinx Clip, a few frame trick that allowed you to clip out of bounds to collect two quick moons without having to enter the quicksand or talk to the Sphinx, Faster Bowser Fight strats that made gaining control of the hats nearly instant, and Scooter Clip, an awkward strat that skips the slow RC car capture. That wasn't all that Shaden did to save time, though. Shaden started utilizing the more optimal and advanced movement techniques. He was able to roll cancel to keep Mario's momentum after rolling. Instead of doing slow long jumps, he would opt for other things like rolling off of ledges. And he began doing spin pounds, a difficult trick involving several inputs in just a fraction of a second. Shaden took all of these new tricks, learned them faster than everyone else, and got record after record. Over the next month, his runs eclipsed everything else. Any new trick or minor optimization, he would learn instantly and use it in runs the next day. I remember watching him finish a practice run of Snow Kingdom. Looking at the time, I realized it was faster than what the community thought to be theoretically possible at the time. He was so good at finding small optimizations that saved very little time by themselves, but together added up to huge time saves over the course of the full run. By the 12th of December, the stoic legend had cut down the record to a 105.14. Alright. After this record, Shaden chose to take a break to focus more on the two-player category. During this break, other runners were able to catch back up. It took 18 days for someone to tie the record. 18 days. If it's not apparent how crazy this is, let me explain. There were hundreds of speedrunners doing runs all throughout this period, many of which were considered to be some of the best in the world. They were doing runs every day, and Shaden was so much better that he had to take a nearly three-week break for anyone to catch up. The person to catch up first was Nicro Vita, a Canadian speedrunner known mostly for holding the Wii Sports world record. This break from Shaden gave Nicro enough time to catch up and tie his record on January 6th. Nicro didn't set a new record though, he merely tied it. The person to beat Shaden's incredible run was Valu with a 104.50, saving time by staying alive in Lost Kingdom where Shaden had a single death, and with the help of Turnip Clip, a new trick which used a turnip and panbro to clip into a glass cage, skipping the need to open it. 
Shaden returned to the category briefly to take the record back with the help of some new tricks. One of them found by Dram55. By jumping across this gap and doing an up throw with Mario, it was possible to collect the moon in the alcove and capture the bullet bill above to instantly warp. Dram insisted this strategy not be named after him, so naturally, the community officially called it Dramstrat. That was an early split. That was the first time I think really split. Now that the runners had caught up to Shaden, they were not willing to let the record go easily. What followed was a tug of war between Shaden and Nicro, the months of February and March. Nicro took the record, right. <laughs> and Shaden took it back. Okay, I got a PB. Then Nicro again. All right, dude, 420. Hey, 420. A rather funny discovery was made around this time. Until March 12th, no one knew 2D Bowser could run in the ending sequence of the game. The fireball button and run button are the same, and since in the speedrun you tap the button relatively quickly, no one noticed Bowser ran until Lil' Curbs just happened to hold the button one day and noticed Bowser moving faster. Saving two seconds there. Back to the tug of war. A month after Nicro's 104.20, Shane beat the record twice. Alright, definitely super solid. I'm gonna do another run after this. Yeah, right back. With this consistent back and forth, it wasn't clear who was going to come out on top. Until Luigi's Balloon World happened. Before I get into the Luigi's Balloon World update, I need to explain the dilemma regarding the first moon. To collect the first moon in Cascade Kingdom, you must break open the rock containing it and watch a short cutscene. Then, collect the moon, which triggers two more cutscenes. Then after the cutscenes, Mario runs up the bridge, into another cutscene, and some dialogue. All in all, taking nearly a minute. The thing is, this first moon is actually possible to be skipped, with a tough jump from the rock over an invisible wall to go straight into the brutal boss fight. The problem with this was that it was only possible on version 1.0 of the game, as any future patches of the game had fixed this first moon skip. Version 1.0, however, was only accessible if the runner had a physical cartridge, as the digital downloads automatically had the newest version. So, the dilemma with the first moon was to either allow the skip and force the half of the community playing on digital to buy a physical copy to be able to compete at a top level, or to ban first moon skip and keep everyone on an even playing field, with the knowledge that the game could technically be beaten faster. Since the game and community was so new, the decision was made a few months prior in December to ban the trick and make the game as accessible as possible for new speedrunners. This ruling worked well until February 21st came around and Luigi's Balloon World was released. With Luigi's Balloon World came an update to the game, an update that made things a bit more complicated for any percent speedruns. This new update patched out the Sphinx Clip and Turnip Clip glitches. This meant that new digital runners of the game were completely unable to do speedruns on even ground now, because they were unable to get the version that all previous speedruns were performed on. This forced the community to make a change to the rules. Since the easiest obtainable version for speedrunning was now a physical copy of the game, all runners should be able to get 1.0, and there was no longer any reason to ban First Moonskip. And so, First Moonskip was allowed. Unfortunately though, this changed things for some runners, most notably Shaden. With this rule change, Shaden lost interest in the any percent grind and switched over to two-player speedruns, never to do a regular any percent run again. And Nicro won the tug of war. But Nicro didn't just win the tug of war, he took that rope and kept on pulling. Nicro took over the category. His first record after Shaden left was 103.33 on March 5th. The first record with first moon skip. Ooh. Ooh. He continued to drop the record down a few times over the course of the month to a 113.16. New world record. Okay. New world record. There we go. New record. It was around this time that I made my single contribution to the speedrun, with the change to the mech fight. Up until this point, the bubbles on the mech were destroyed starting on the left side, moving clockwise, then finishing with the bubble in the center. I discovered that if you started on the right side of the mech, you could destroy the first two bubbles much faster. Then, if you also switched the order of the last two bubbles, it would also save some time. That wasn't the only discovery around this period. There was a discovery much more important than a few seconds of time save on the mech. The community discovered Goryuya. Goryuya was a Japanese speedrunner who just 
didn't know how to submit to the leaderboards. It turns out, he had been running the game for a few months already. His personal best time was a 103.59, fourth in the world. Only 30 seconds behind the world record. Goryuya's run was something very special though. Since Goryuya wasn't able to communicate with the community, he had invented some incredible strats and optimizations that no one had ever considered. In fact, he had already come up with the mech strats I just talked about. But he had a faster way of doing it. Looking through his run, you could find movement optimizations across every kingdom. The craziest thing about it was that it didn't do first moon skip, which saves 40 seconds. If Goryuya was able to do first moon skip, this would have been a world record, but he was stuck on version 1.2, the slowest version of the game. Along with Goryuya, some other runners were getting close to taking the record as well. Lil Curbs was in fifth place, just over a minute away from the record. So Isaiga, a runner who had always been slightly behind the records, was close as well, pulling off a 103.29 on April 6th, just 13 seconds slower than the record. And then the next day, Suisaga got a PB by 15 seconds, nabbing him his first record. Ah, oh, that was bad, but... okay. Only to have it taken away a few hours later by Nitro with a 103 flat. Nope. Then further improving it by 12 seconds on the 20th. Suisaga didn't let up. He kept grinding away at runs and learning new strats. It paid off on April 30th. The new record wasn't a huge one, only by two seconds. But this run marks the point where the records were getting absurdly tough to beat. The run was including strats like double Sphinx Clip, where you had to perform the already difficult Sphinx Clip twice in a row, only to save two seconds. Flower Road Skip was done with a Spin Pound Instant Roll Cancel, which is like seven precise inputs in under half a second. There's a strat in Lost Kingdom called Cage Triple that looked like this. Most importantly, this run was the first record to do Snow Dram. The strat, having nothing to do with Dram 55, people just kept naming stuff after him as a joke. This tight jump in Snow Kingdom required complete mastery of movement in the air to just barely make. It saved 7 seconds, but lost 30 if failed. For the entirety of May, using these ridiculous strats, he dropped the record down several times to a 102.30. Nitro managed to slip in a record in June, with a 102.19. Let's go. Finally, dude. Then, Robin Cyrex found a useless clip in Metro Kingdom where they backflipped, grabbed a moon, and went through the wall. One of the community's avid glitch hunters, Circle, figured out how it worked that same day. As it turns out, this clip was far from useless. If Mario backflips and cap throws at the correct time, his hitbox shifts drastically backwards. If Mario happens to be beside a wall, his hitbox can go through that wall for a short moment, but in normal gameplay, the wall pushes him back in bounds. This push, however, can be prevented by picking up a moon on the same few frames where Mario is out of bounds. With this knowledge, Circle scoured the game and discovered two moons where this clip could be employed. The first, in Cascade Kingdom, where, when grabbing this chest moon, Mario can clip into the ceiling, thus skipping the need to climb back up, saving two seconds. The second is in Wooded Kingdom, using this nut. With this nut, it's possible to clip out of bounds, do a blind dive over to a tiny sliver of ground, jump up into a small hole, perform a very precise wall jump to collect a moon out of bounds, then another wall jump and dive up back in bounds. And the strat isn't over yet, because another quick moon can be collected by running perfectly straight up this slope while mashing the jump button. Overall, this difficult nut clip strategy completely changed the Wooded Kingdom around. With these two extra moons, it was now faster to skip the Spirit boss fight at the end of the kingdom, and instead, jump from the top of the tower, way down to the moon around the corner, and into the flooded pipes area to finish, saving a full 25 seconds if done well. The nut clip was discovered during Summer Games Done Quick 2018, the week-long speedrunning charity event. Nikro was attending this event and couldn't do runs. So Suisaga capitalized fully on the opportunity to take the record right back. After learning Nutclip, Suisaga started up runs the next day, getting a 4 second world record, and he held first place for the following month, gradually lowering it to the first 101. Okay. Okay. Nitro managed to sneak in another record on July 26th. Lil Curbs managed to get his first world record on the 31st. Oh, I'm on the... Okay. We split a second late because I wasn't on my splits, but it's a 101.42. Let's go. Then, Suisaga, Lil Curbs, and Nitro traded records for a bit, with Nitro finishing it off 
was a 10107. It was around this point that the sub hour run began to be considered more seriously. It had been proven for a few months that a run under one hour was theoretically possible by a community project where the best segments of every top runner were spliced together to create a theoretically perfect run. But now that it seemed to be on the horizon, all of the top runners started to focus on their runs with much more intent. None of them could come close yet. They started grinding away. Every top runner wanted to be the first to get the legendary sub-hour run. Chaos Pringle was one of those runners. With the sub-hour run close to a minute away from the world record, it seemed to fire him up. Chaos Pringle managed to tie Nitro's 10107 on October 13th. Alright, that's tied world record! Woo! Fuck yeah! He did not stop there. Woo! What a little boys! Yeah! Ah! Oh my god! He kept grinding hard. I split! What the fuck? Why isn't it working? It did world records, Zafaro. You could hear the passion in his voice with every new world record he achieved. Fuck yes! Woo! Yes! Sir! Yes! October ended, November started. Woo! Yes! Fuck! That's the shit I'm talking about! His world records continued. Damn it, dude! November ended, and Chaos still held the world record. He had been number one in the world for 48 days straight. It was the longest uninterrupted streak up until this point. It wasn't until December 2nd that Equanimity got a 10038 that Chaos's streak ended. Equanimity's run included Lake Clip, an incredibly difficult strat not previously used in runs that saved 7 seconds by going out of bounds to collect two fast moons and skip the Rango boss fight. Oh, oh my shit, man. Man. Oh, my Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god! This record lasted until the end of December, when Chaos went on another tear. He learned Late Clip, got a 34, then a 31, then a 24, then Fish Clip was discovered, a 5 second time save in Seaside Kingdom, where a fish was used to clip out of bounds to get two quick moons. On February 10th, 2019, this is where things became incredibly competitive. The leaderboard looked like this. Every single one of these runners was capable of achieving the sub-hour run at this point. But sub-hour was by no means easy. To beat Super Mario Odyssey in under one hour, the run had to be nearly flawless. For just under one hour, one of these seven runners needed to be perfect. Most of the runners at this point were doing runs for 8 to 12 hours a day, every single day, in order to be the first to claim one of the most prestigious records in speedrunning history. These seven runners wanted perfection, and they were getting very, very close. Necro got a world record on February 11th. In this run, he missed a moon, had trouble talking to Toad, Mario rolled in a strange way, he missed a shard, and had a sloppy pillars run altogether for 12 seconds of mistakes. He finished with a 1 hour, 11 second time. We have 12 seconds to go. Chaos got a 10012 on February 17th. He missed 3 spin pounds, bonked once, and missed a triple jump, losing 13 seconds. Low Curbs tied Chaos on the 20th, losing 13 seconds in Moon Kingdom due to a failed moon skip Nitro pulled off another world record on the 21st. He lost 2 seconds on Sphinx Clip, 2 seconds to an accidental spin pound, 3 seconds to a bad wiggler fight, and 3 seconds to a missed spin pound. 10 seconds of mistakes, leaving him with a 1 hour, 9 second time. The next day, Lil Curbs got onto a run that looked to be it. Each kingdom was essentially flawless. He was on pace to be the first to get it. Then, in Bowser's Kingdom, he jumped slightly too close to the ogre, making it turn, losing 2 seconds. He kept the run going and got into the final room without making any more mistakes. I'm not sure. This is too close. I don't think it is. It's gonna need to be retimed. I literally beat the game in an hour. <laughs> exactly one hour. Lil Curbs made a two second mistake and it cost him this chance at sub hour. That's how insane sub hour was. And with the world record now at one hour exactly, the pressure was on. 
was going to happen any day, especially with a new discovery. Limcube found that in Sand Kingdom, if you shifted around the order of the moons a bit, hitting this crate moon slightly later, it saved four seconds. With this new trick, sub-hour was likelier than ever. Chaos got one hour seven seconds on March 1st. Nitro got one hour two seconds on March 6th. Chaos tied Nitro on March 18th. On the 21st, Chaos was on pace, but fell off the mech, losing the run. On the 22nd, Goryuya was on pace, but failed Moonskip. That same day, Nitro lost a run in luncheon. The next day, Nitro got onto a run. It was much like Lil' Curb's run. He made no mistakes in Cap. He made no mistakes in Cascade. He made no mistakes in Sand. He didn't make a single mistake across every kingdom. And again, going into Bowser's kingdom, it looked like this run was the one. He made it into the mech fight on perfect pace. It's over. He failed. He missed a single jump to get up onto the mech, and it was over. But he did not give up. He started another run immediately after, and he did not fail this time. He played Super Mario Odyssey better than any other person in the world that run. He didn't miss a single jump, a single button press, an angle on the joystick, a capture. He did everything perfectly. Up until the final room, where on March 23rd, 2019, he did this. Yes, dude. Yes. Yes. Fuck yes. Woo! <laughs> let's go, dude. Yeah, let's go. You did it. I got it. Dude, it's a 59. You got it? Oh my god. Yo, this is crazy. Holy shit. Oh my god. Nitro Vita had done it. He beat Super Mario Odyssey in under one hour. This barrier that people once thought was impossible to overcome had been broken. It's not possible. Humans cannot get sub out. We're just not going to do it. The hype was immense. Thousands of people all across the speedrunning community flocked to his channel to watch it happen. It was amazing. Now, the world record history doesn't stop there. 12 hours later, Goryuya tied Nitro with a 59-59 for his first world record. <laughs> then, Chaos brought it down to a 59-58 in the following month. After this, another update for Super Mario Odyssey was released. This update still had the patched first moon skip, sphinx clip, and turnip clip, but the game loaded significantly faster, saving around 10 seconds. Sub hour became slightly easier to achieve, and so, two runners saw the opportunity to catch up and did so, with the help of this update. While Goryuya and Chaos dropped the record down a few more times, Tyrone18 and Mitch managed to catch up to claim the record for themselves. Tyrone with a 59-32. Then <laughs> Mitch with a 59-14. A friendly rivalry between them continued, with Tyrone getting the first sub-59 minute run in October of 2019. Let's go. He further improved it that month with 
Watching Ty run's 5847 run, it looks perfect. He's taken the run and optimized it down to the smallest detail. Every strat and piece of movement meticulously and deliberately performed. The record can still be improved though. A precise skip in Cascade Kingdom was found recently that saved 7 seconds. And the game has only been out for just over 2 years. Surely there's more to be discovered in the coming months and years. But for now, Tyrone's 5847 is where the record stands. It's that, my job here is done. Thanks for watching.